Jerusalem was besieged. No buying, no selling, no production, no freedom. People were only depending on whatever was in their stocks. There was no way to renew or replenish even what they had. As the stocks were going down, it was difficult for them to restock. In a city that is under siege, no one is free from calamity, brethren. But I declare concerning you, evil will not locate you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, somebody. I welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ into this beautiful Sunday service. I pray that by the special grace of God, this will not be our last worship experience in the mighty name of Jesus. I welcome you. May you be blessed mightily as we worship together. Good morning, church. Begin the worship service this morning, singing from the Baptist hymn now, hymn 305. Take the name of Jesus with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the 
King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's I am that I am, the way maker, the miracle walker, the unchangeable changer. He's awesome in our midst. Wherever you are in your closet, why not just wave your hands to the King of Kings? Raise your hands to him and say, Father, we have come again. Receive our praise. Receive our worship. Begin to appreciate the King of Kings because he's the reason why we are gathered. He's the reason why we have the breath of life. He's the reason why we are able to see ourselves again. We are able to, to meet with our loved ones. Why not appreciate Jesus and say, Father, thank you. Father, you are awesome. Father, you are great. You are the way maker, the unmovable mover, the unchangeable changer. Yahweh is your name. Father, we bless you. We worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You
worship somebody pray somebody worship somebody pray somebody worship somebody pray somebody worship somebody pray chapter 4. We are reading from Mark chapter 4. And we'll be looking at verses 35 to 41. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. And I read. And the same day, when the even was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the inner part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word for the strengthening of our feet. I've seen a lot of people going through situations. And I've gone through situations myself. That the only thing that took me through it is Jesus. The only name that I could remember, even in 
all of my problems is Jesus. And I don't know what you're going through. Yet I feel your pains. But I'm here to witness to you this morning that He is able to take you through it. And I'm very sure He will take you through it in the name of Jesus. The bless us in listen in Jesus' name.
Glory be to the Lord in the highest. Once again, I bless the name of the Lord for your life. That you are among the living that are celebrating today, that are rejoicing in the victory of the Lord. I bless the name of the Lord that you are among the people that are seated to hear even this message of the Lord again today. I pray that it will be a blessing to you. It will be a blessing to me as well. In the mighty name of Jesus. But before we go into the message, I would like to seize this opportunity to recognize those who are our baddest celebrants for this, uh, for this week to the glory of God. We we'll rejoice with all of you and we pray that you will live long to celebrate more and more in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For this new week, by the grace of God, we have uh, Sister Adiri Isola Ishola uh, leading the team for this week. That is for the 26th of this, uh, of this month. I think that is today. Today is her birthday, Sunday 26th of April. By the grace of God, we have Jesus Ferrami Adiola April 29. We also have uh, Brother Adesafe Zion, April 29. We have uh, Dr. Ife Uluwa Uyelowo, April 30. And by the grace of God, we also have uh, our little uh, little brother, Uluwa Shijibomi Olajide, for May 2nd. We rejoice with all of you. And as many as of you that your names are not with me, but you are also celebrating uh, your date of birth this, this week. I want you to know that we rejoice with you. And we pray that you will continue to have reasons to celebrate in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Once again, I say you are welcome, my brothers. I say you are welcome, my sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is another moment of sharing the word of life, the word of faith, the word of God. The psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Brethren, this is one of the things that we must not forget to do. We must not forget all the benefits of God upon our lives. We must continue to bless him. Regardless of whatever it is that is happening around us, regardless of news, negative news that are probably flying here and there, we must not forget to continue to bless the name of the Lord. By this, we will be able to appreciate him more and more. In Psalm 140, verse 6, it is written, O Lord, I say to you, you are my God. Hear, O Lord, my cry for mercy. May God hear our cry for mercy over our land in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that may the Lord hear your cry for mercy as well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible, according to Romans chapter 1, verse 16, says, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And so, Father, I pray, even this morning, that, Lord, you will make this message of yours today to be power unto us. And eternal God, you will make this message to release your unction 
even upon the life of your children for salvation, for healing, and for deliverance. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 17 of that same Romans chapter 1 states that through the gospel, your righteousness is revealed unto us, O God. Father, so therefore I pray that through this message today, eternal Father, let your righteousness be revealed unto us and the whole world in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I also pray that you will speak to me and through me to your people and my people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal God, for hearing my prayers. For in Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. This morning, the Lord is speaking to us in the gospel according to Mark chapter 4. And our focus is on verses 35 to 41. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark chapter 4 verses 35 to 41. And we'll be looking at the topic, Jesus, master of the storm. Jesus, master of the storm. That is the topic that we are considering this morning by the help of the Holy Spirit. In verse 35 of our text, we had the description of the time. The Bible states that same day, that is what we have in that verse 35, and the same day, that is the way it put it, when the evening came, this shows to us that the event we have in this passage of the scripture happened in the evening or late afternoon of the day. There is also an indication from this verse 35 that something had happened earlier the same day. So when the Bible says that the same day it is showing to us indirectly that this is happening the same day that some things or something had happened earlier. A look at that chapter, Luke chapter 4, especially from verse 1, helps to note that the day was a very busy day for Jesus. He was engaged in a very long teaching section giving the parables of the sower and others associated with it. According to verse 33 of that passage. It was after this long teaching section that he and his disciples then decided to move out of the neighborhood of Capernaum to cross the lake of Galilee to its eastern shore. Both Matthew and Luke also recorded this event. By Mark, helping us to know when the event took place is an indication and an attestation that the event really happened. So, the story was true. Not just something that was concocted in order to add to the value of the person or the power of Jesus Christ. As a matter of truth, nobody can hide anything to the person and the power of Jesus Christ. And nobody can as well remove anything from it. Brethren, that you are alive today is real. That you are living is real. That you are going through some undesired experiences is also real. I stand to tell you, brethren, that death is real. Failure is also real. But none of this can hide or remove anything from the person and the power of God. Let us quickly look at this. Why did the storm arise? Why 
they disturb arise. In the book of Jonah, chapter 1, and especially verse 4, there was a similar problem, a similar situation. Storm arose. But it must be noted that the storm that arose in Jonah was a consequence of Jonah's disobedience to God. On the other side, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ followed the instruction of the master. It was Jesus who said to them, let us pass over onto the other side. As you see in that verse 35, the most beautiful point here is that Jesus was even in the boats with his disciples. So the disciples were not alone inside the boat. Jesus was there with them. So why did the storm arise? Brethren, storms do not arise only as a result of sin in life, but even as a result of obedience unto God. Many of us, just like the Jews, have trained our minds so much to the side of judging others. We elevate ourselves more than others. We believe that things are not working for them because they are, they are sinners than us. When we see a sister that is of age, but yet to be married, the first thing that comes to our mind is that she must have wasted her life. And that might not be so. When we see people who are not made it like us or like some people, we easily concluded that he or she must have been a lazy person or that God is angry with him or her. And that might not be the case. When we see a lady that has been married for some years, yet without a child of her own, what comes to mind as we gossip about her is, do you know how many abortions she must have committed? Do you know if she's still having womb inside of her? And that might not be the case with her. Brethren, it is not every storm of life that brings shame and destruction. There are some storms of life that lead to glory and celebration. I declare concerning you that that storm you are struggling with will end in praise. It will end in testimony. It will end in glory by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was in that boat with his disciples. Brothers, you are not alone. My sisters, Jesus is with you. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 states, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted even like as we are, yet without a sin. Let us also look at another side as we continue to look at this portion of the same word of God. And we look at the side of Jesus as he demonstrated his authority. And you will see that especially in verses 38 and 39. And I read, the Bible says, And he, that is Jesus, was in the inner parts of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they, that is the disciples, awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And I will say, 
carest thou not that we drown? And Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. The disciples battled with the storm on their own but could not solve the problem. Then they went to Jesus. They woke him up and said to him, Master, teacher, don't you care if we perish? Don't you care if we drown? You see, my dear brothers and sisters, this is typical of an average human being. Very few people will admit that they are not sufficient in themselves to undo the storm they are facing. To absorb themselves, they will go on to blame the indifference of others as the cause or causes of their problems or suffering. The disciples said to Jesus, don't you care that we perish? Someone that was sleeping. Eh? Someone that was not aware of what was going on. Someone whom they have not invited or approached for help. I think they should have said, Lord, help us. For we cannot help ourselves. I think they should have said, Lord, help us, for we cannot undo this situation alone. Why are you making bold face, my brothers? Why are you making bold face, my sister? Why are you accusing people for what they knew nothing about? Why are you annoyed and venting out your anger? On another person concerning issue which you have not even invited him or are into. Why don't you ask for help instead of making enemy out of that man of that or that woman? This is one of the pain and burden in leadership. Jesus woke up according to that verse 38. He woke up and verse 38 states, the disciples woke him. You might want to say that the storm you are battling with is still there in your life because God is sleeping. You might want to say that that is why the situation is still there. Because God is sleeping. And so since God is sleeping, God has not been able to listen to you or to answer your prayers. My dear brothers and sisters, I stand to say no. That is not correct. The Bible says in Psalm 121 verse 4 that he who watches over Israel will neither slumber no sleep. So what happened in Luke chapter 4 was a demonstration of the human side of Jesus Christ. As the Bible says, that he took upon himself the form of man. Jesus did not bother himself with the disciples first. Rather, he faced the storm he confronted the storm. He did not pleaded. He did not plead with the storm. But rebuked him. He did not negotiate with the storm. But declared his authority. Peace. Be still. He said. And it was so. God is confronting the storm. In somebody's life right now. It is not about negotiation. Nor pleading. 
but about authority. You are having victory right now. Someone is changing side from the side of victims, from the side of losers to the side of champions in the name of the Lord Jesus. May you be that person that is changing side right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Don't bother about how long the storm has been with you. Jesus was told and invited when Lazarus was sick. Yet, he waited for Lazarus to die so that a greater miracle could be performed. Jesus was sleeping in that boat and continued to sleep in order that the, in order that the disciples might see the complete authority of Jesus over the forces of nature. Arise, O God, and release your power over the forces of nature. Release your power, O Lord, over the storms of our lives. Individually and collectively as a nation and the world at large. As I am closing this message, my dear brothers and sisters, may I call your attention to something? Quickly, look at verse 41 of that Luke chapter 4, which is our main text. Verse 41. And I read, And they feared exceedingly and said, one to another. What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? And I take it again. The Bible says, and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, what manner of man is this? What manner of the man is Jesus? Hallelujah. What manner of the man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, what manner of the man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What manner of the man is Jesus? Hallelujah. Oh, he made the blinds to see. Hallelujah. He makes the limbs to work. Hallelujah. What manner of man is this? That was what the disciples were saying to one another. They were terrified. They were afraid. Fear came upon them exceedingly to the point that they began to ask one another. Who is this? What type of a person is this? What type of a teacher is this? What type of a man is this? Even to the point that the wings, the sea, they obey him. Initially, brothers and my sisters, these were people that were afraid of the storm. Before, the fear that was upon them was the fear as a result of that storm. The fear of that, the fear that they might, they might be drowned because of the storm. But now, they were now afraid of the master Jesus. Oh, I pray sincerely, God will answer and settle your case. In a way that you begin to fear him exceedingly. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say God will rise because of your situation. He will step into your case. He will handle your case. In a manner, in a way that his fear will come upon you. And you yourself, you begin to wonder. What? kind of God is this? What manner of God is this? In the name of Jesus. Yoruba man calls him Ogbeninija 
Kero Bonija. That is one who fights one's battle in a way that terrifies even the owner of that battle. Jesus, master of the, of the storm. Why don't you hand the storm over to him today? Stop murmuring and blaming others. Stop transferring unnecessary aggression to innocent people. Begin to see your own inadequacy in handling this storm and ask Jesus for help today. Call on him. The disciples, they went to him. They called on him. And their fear went away. The fear of death. The fear of the storm. The fear that they might be drowned, that they might perish. God changed to fear for the Lord. They began to say, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. Brethren, there is no storm that Jesus cannot handle. There is no storm that Jesus is not master over. Brethren, I want you to know that our scientists all over the world are still struggling even to find solution to the coronavirus that is destroying the whole world. The fear of coronavirus has come upon every one of us. But I want you to know, my brothers and my sisters, that Jesus is more than that storm. That Jesus is the master over every storm of life. Only if we will return unto him. Only if you and I will turn to him and acknowledge our inadequacies. And say, Lord Jesus, come and help us. In half of us blaming God. In half of us transferring aggression to others. In half of us attacking one another. Let us acknowledge that God is God. He is no man. And that with him, nothing is impossible. With him, nothing is difficult. He is the master over the storm. The master over every storm of life. That storm that you are struggling with, Jesus is the master of it. Call him today. Call him right now. And you will see the answer. May the Lord bless you. As you bow your heads and your hearts, as you go before him, as you declare your inadequacies before him, as you surrender everything unto him, I know that God is here right now. Jesus is listening to you. He's ready to demonstrate even his power, his authority, his deity over that situation. Today you will rejoice. This new week you will rejoice. Celebration will come unto you. Victory is already at your doorstep, my brother. Victory is already at your doorstep, my sister. Claim it right now and begin to celebrate. Turn that your memory to testimony. Turn that your complaint to songs of praise. As you see, as you watch the Lord taking over the situation even for you. Thank you, eternal Father. We give glory unto you. We give honor unto you. I celebrate you, O oh God, in the life of my sisters. I celebrate you, O oh God, in the life of my brother. Thank you, eternal God, because you are the only one that is more than able, O oh God, to do all things. And thank you, eternal God, because you are already at work. Because you are already taking over these situations. Because you are already, O oh God, rising. Oh Lord, even against all these storms. Thank you, eternal Father. Because all these storms that are before your people today, Lord, they are seeing them no more. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus and in accordance with the word of God, I declare concerning that storm of your life,
I declare concerning this storm that is that is that is ravaging, that is moving over the whole world, that is moving over Nigeria, that is moving over 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 Lagos. I declare peace be still in the name of Jesus Christ. I say today, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, the Lord is translating you away from the realm and the club of losers, from the realm and the clubs, oh God, of frost, of, of, of people that, are, that have been frustrated, from the club of failures, the Lord is translating you into the realm and the clubs of champions. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, eternal Father. We give glory unto you. We acknowledge, O oh God, that you that watches over Israel, you neither sleep nor slumber. You that watches over Nigeria, you neither sleep nor slumber. You that watches over us, you are God that is ever active. Thank you, Father. We celebrate you, Lord. We honor you, God. And we promise you, eternal Father, that we will continue to testify that indeed you are the master over the storms of life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We worship you. For what you have done, we say thank you. For what you are doing right now, we say thank you. For more results that we will see, Father, we say thank you glory be unto you. For in Jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen. And so I release the grace of God upon your lives. I pray that the light of God will continue to light your path. I pray that the strength of God will carry you through even as you go in this new week. I declare that the protection of Jehovah will be upon your life. I say that no arrows of the enemy will be able to penetrate unto you. I declare that no harm will come near your place of dwelling. I say that you will dwell in safety. You will heed in safety. In the mighty name of Jesus. And that the fellowship of the Holy Spirit will continue to be your portion. Even now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And amen. In Jesus mighty name. I bless you. Thank you very much, my brothers. Thank you, my sisters. Thank you for being part of this worship experience. I want you to know that God that we are serving never fail. See you again next Sunday by the grace of God. I'm waiting for your testimonies. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Close the service, singing from the Baptist hymn now, hymn 219. Pass me not, O Jane, to save you. Throne of mercy, find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help my own belief. Savior, save.
Savior, hear my humble cry. Why, Lord, Lord, as thou art holy, do not pass me by. Trust in Lord, would I see thy face? Heal my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by thy grace. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Why, Lord, Lord, as thou art do not pass me by Now the spring of all my comfort, more than light to me. Who my by on earth beside thee, who may heaven but thee. Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. Why? Thou art holy, do 